this talk is called My Name Is. It's basically about the name tags that uh, you're all wearing tonight. Um, so basically the story goes that we're developers and um, we're all about automating things and um, just a quick hand, show of hands, who's had to generate an automated document before, be it an invoice or a report or anything? Wow, that's like 90% yeah, of the audience and most of the other 10% have been doing more interesting things. Um, but the, uh, so the thing is, look, we've got this stigma about us that we can't talk to people and that's a bit of BS, but whatever, it's the thing. The one thing that I do struggle with personally and I think many other people uh, do as well is about remembering people's names. And as Java developers, we can remember something like uh, Mustache Resource Template Listener or some really long uh, Java name. Um, or, you know, if we forget, we can just do like a, uh, you know, Apple N in Eclipse, um, in IntelliJ, or Control Space in Eclipse, and then, you know, we, we can remember the name. Unfortunately, when in real life, that does not happen. So when I'm talking to people, and uh, Mehdi came up to me earlier, and he's like, oh, I sent you a message on Meetup, and I'm like, who are you again? Which, you know, and so I could, you know, just kind of do a shy look and, and remember his name, and, and all was well again. Um, but basically, you know, the name tags, uh, someone suggested it would be a good thing uh, many meetups ago, and we've had them running uh, ever since. Um, you know, there's a few things, you know, you try to, rem how you try to remember people's names. Um, you know, and I've tried all the things like where you've, if you do forget, you know, you just kind of go on the conversation and you kind of think, what are we going to do? Are we going to, um, you know, just I'll call your mate until the end of the, hopefully the conversation will finish. Um, the other thing is, you know, you'll kind of like blur the syllables out. So um, you guys aren't wearing name tags because you came later. Amsa, <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to remember Amsa. Sorry, it's just. But I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to sit there and go. Like I'm just going to muffle the syllables and hopefully it'll sound like Amsa. Like I'm just, you know, remembering your name. I'll, I'll remember bits of your name and I'll. I'll remember. Um, what I will remember is I'll remember your story. I'll remember a story more than uh, I'll remember your name for some weird reason. So I'll know where you're married, whereabouts you live. I'm not a stalker. I just, <laughs> I just that, that is how it is. And people remember stories more than that they remember um, names. Well, I, that's why I, I, I make myself sleep at night thinking that. So anyway, the, we have a case for name tags. Um, the uh, um, we normally get a few volunteers to do our name tags. So normally it would be like the sponsor, they would have a receptionist or one of the organisers, their receptionist would go and print out the name tags. And so, um, yeah, we basically would just go to them, but this was not foolproof, um, mainly for two reasons that, um, you know, it's trying to find that person and hope that they're not taking a sick day off at work. Um, the other thing would be that um, there's a lot of chopping and changing, particularly in the last few hours before a meetup. So if you print out a set of um, names from meetup at 9 a.m. in the morning of the day of the meetup, then by 6 p.m., about 75, well, sorry, 25% of that list has changed. Um, and that's just the thing. So what we'd like to do is trying to get it closer and closer so that it's actually real and representative. And we're, I don't know, you can go the whole environmental thing. We're not wasting paper, printing, you know, name tags for people who aren't going to show up. Um, so, um, yeah, look, we're developers. And so we kind of like, you know, we, every time we'd have a sponsor go, yeah, this takes a long time. And, you know, sometimes we'd forget and they'd, they'd actually go to the effort of here's the list and they would write out every, like 100 names on, on, uh, on notes. And so we're like, yeah, we can automate this. This is going to be, we're, we're developers. This should just happen. Um, so that's what we decided to do. We um, decided to, uh, to automate it. And about exactly um, this meetup a year ago, we had a guy, uh, Doc Moses, who is um, our sponsor. Um, he, they, a guy, Paul uh, Jowett from Doc Moses came and he um, talked about his product and we got to know him really well. And um, we thought, well, this would be a great pr um, uh, product to basically use to generate our own name tags um, so that we wouldn't forget and we could do mail merging. So we're just going to talk about um, how we did this and how we integrated with the Meetup API um, and uh, go from there. So um, Doc Moses, I'll bring up their web page um, just to remind me what they are. But they're, 
basically they're all about document generation. So what they do is if you've got a invoice template, um, you've got like, um, you know, they, they basically generate thousands upon thousands of documents. So say it's like one of their customers is the Western Australian uh, school system and like primary school system. And so when they um, generate documents, they've got to generate all the reports. And it's basically about spitting out a whole bunch of um, documents to a, a, either a Java service or a cloud service and um, have those templates fill in really quickly. Um, but the, the, the big thing is that basically to make these templates, you make them in um, tools that your business users can use. So it's all written using Microsoft Word or OpenOffice and you make your template using those, that tool. Um, you put a little bit of metadata in, which is just what the people type, which I'll show in a sec. Um, and then you just generate, um, you just generate your code. You send it a bit of uh, JSON and you can render, render that code. So we'll show that, that through tonight. Um, I've got uh, five minutes of a talk who is to show you the template that we did and this one here. All right, so um, yeah, this is a bog standard Word document. Um, actually, before I show that, there is another. So these things, these things are Avery labels uh, and you just buy. So these are the things that you put into a printer and you, um, you, what you do is you download from their website a template for Microsoft Word, and that's all you can do. You can, I think they, they offer a program you can download, but basically the whole idea is you download this Microsoft Word template, and then you um, get your receptionist to fill in all the, the data and put it in. And here's Stockmosis. Um, what they've done is um, I've got the, um, where is it? Um, just one sec. So this is what you download, essentially. This guy over here. a little bit of testing went into this. <laughs> so yeah, you download something that looks like that. You don't even get the, they don't, they don't even hide, show the grid lines, which is a bit unfortunate. So you basically get that. And then what we've done is turn that into um, something that Docmosis can, can read. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. So. Um, the, there's all these different tags in Docmosis, but like I said, there's basically stuff that users, humans can, um, who aren't technical can uh, read. There's a guide, a template guide and whatever. This RR thing means repeating rows. So basically just have, we've got a list of users from Meetup um, and for them we've got photos and we've got a name of them. Um, in the behind the scenes, uh, there's support for fields in um, Microsoft Word. So we can put a photo URL against this picture. So um, there's a feature of bookmarking. Um, where are we? Bookmarks, bookmarks, bookmarks. Sorry, I'm, I'm a software developer. I don't know how to use Microsoft Word. Um, I tell you what, I probably spent a lot of time trying to make my way around this stuff. Anyway, so insert bookmarks, you've got like these, here's some we prepared earlier, so these image fit var photo one, Docmosis, no, Docmosis marries that up to photo one and photo two. And so basically what we did is we had this repeating rows, um, that's this step two thing just means that we're doing two at a time. And then we're just basically keep repeating until the end of the data set. Um, and then what that ends up um, coming, which um, Daniel will show you, is basically this um, PDF of, of name tags. Um, so I think you guys can all see that. You know, you know what, you, what you got, but um, it all gets generated uh, in the cloud very quickly. Um, so what I do is um, I upload this template to, uh, let me do this. So actually, no, I'll do it here because I've got one already there. So, um, tink, tink, tink. This looks a lot easier on my machine at home. Um, there we go. So, uploaded a, you use this, the, their cloud console, you log in, you upload your template. So that's the a template I just showed you. Um, uploaded it onto their website and then you can render the template. So you can basically, uh, template 5.docx is the template I want to render. Um, what I might do is, because we're kind of, I don't want to talk all the time too, and Daniel, I want to show 
get Daniel an opportunity to show what he's done. So um, there's basically a, um, a page where we can get uh, the data from. And I might need, because of the internet situation here, I might need to refresh that. But basically, you can take a JSON feed, you can take give it XML and a whole bunch of other stuff and, um, and put data, data in. Let's see if that, no, it doesn't like that. I'll restart the server. Um, so, well, yeah, what I might do is just pass on to yourself and you can talk more about what we built. Yeah, so I got some of the uh, the ugliest spring code I've ever written here. Uh, so it's it's a little bit rough. Um, so it's all Spring Boot, um, and one thing that we wanted to do is to show you the code. We didn't really want to show our API key, so it's all hidden away in configuration. All right, can no one read that? So there's a presentation log that is a bit blurry. It's a bit blurry. It's on file and Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. So this is a really basic Spring Boot application that we kind of just we threw together to automate this whole thing. Um, so we've, we've basically, we've got two REST APIs. We wanted to combine them to, to get what we want, um, which does mean that, that bits of it are rather ugly. Uh, so there's, there's a few bits to this. So the first thing we need to do is get the events. So, um, so that's our first call into the, uh, into the Meetup API. And We've got, rest, uh, we've got rest templates from Spring. We've got our URLs there. And they, with, with basically no real effort, we just basically created a POJO with the, the fields we wanted to pull out. Uh, and that gives us the, uh, the events. And that's just needed to, to put the key in, 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 the, later, um, in the later requests. Uh, the only other thing that I'd I think, think it'd be good to point out here is most of this works really quickly, except for getting the members. So we're up to how many members? Over a thousand members now. Almost eleven hundred Almost members, and the API is not that quick in retrieving these. So, you know, I just suck cacheable there, and it means that you can regenerate it with basically not having to do the big bit. And, and once, once I added that in, the first call takes maybe 30 seconds. Subsequent calls take maybe five or six. And that's still with two API calls, the one to the meetup to get the RSVPs and one to get the actual document. I'm going to try a, is it footloop back? How do we go back? I mean, yeah. sorry. Now the, Ah. All right, so we'll go, we'll go back to the... Ah. This is why I didn't like presentation. Man. So we'll go back to the main application. Uh, wrong project. Wrong project. Closest, Closest window. All right, we'll go back to the main project in, in a... So yeah, so we get we get the list of attendees, uh, and and the real good bit of this comes from the, the get name tags, which will return a PDF as a byte array. And if we go into the docmosis render, uh, now the REST API is a little bit different. You basically you just post to a URL one JSON object, and you get back the data you want. 
So yeah, to, to basically convert what is now a list of attendees um, in, in JSON after it gets sent, you just have to create a little, another little POJO called docmosis request, uh, put in your, your API keys and send that out to their system. And like I said, I was, I was surprised at how fast this was. So this returned sort of returned in a couple of seconds once we got over the meetup caching. Um, it was really quick. Uh, so that, that's about all there is to it. We've, we've put this up on GitHub. Uh, it's not currently on the Melbourne JVM accounts on mine, but we'll share that after the meetup. Um, and, and the interesting thing is, because it just uses the, the normal meetup API, uh, there's nothing we did that was special to Mel JVM. So there's nothing hard coded in there. Uh, so you could use this to generate name tags for basically any meetup which I thought was good because, you know, once we've got this, it, it makes, it makes change, making small changes to them a lot easier. So the old process used to basically be throw it away at the end of every meetup, do it again in Word and mail merge. Uh, but with this, it's sort of, it's all easy to do there. It, it's all there and it's really reproducible, which is great. Cool. All right, so. Do you have anything else you want to say about? Yeah, I'll just finish off with some, some things. I'll probably show you, yeah, we'll probably demo mm -hmm. the, uh, actually we've got, Andrew's telling me we've got not much time left, so um, <laughs> we're in, in negative time now. Um, so, just, just a quick thing. Um, I did have the tab open here and I'll upload it, but basically, uh, Docmosis have got resources for their cloud products, so you can um, go and see their REST API and their template guide. Um, they're coming out with a new release any day now, which supports barcodes and, and a new expression language, so you can have if, if statements in your Word document. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> just what we need. Uh, but yeah, some, some really useful stuff. It's really powerful, so 90% yeah, you, of you generate reports. Please go check it out and support our sponsor. Um, and yeah, thanks. Any any questions? Oh, that's a good. Yeah, I don't know. You can actually well, you can try it for free. Um, and uh, yeah, I actually don't know. I, I don't know what the the thing is. But um, I'll put you in touch with Paul, and I'll put Paul's details on the the site there, and you can have a look. Um, yeah, might here to sell it just to talk about it. How much time does it take to actually print the labels? Yeah, that was interesting, and more so because Microsoft Word between Mac and PC sucks. So, what? Um, in, you can go in here, and there's table uh, no, layout, and basically a um, Avery label is 3.91 millimeters or centimeters tall. Um, so it was basically the templates composed of the the top bit with the details and the bottom bit. And Word on the Mac would basically change this when it felt like it to one centimetre. I'm actually pretty sure I saved that as 0.98 and now it's just inched it by one. And so basically what would happen is the first ones at the top would line up and then edge down. Um, once uh, I got a little bit of help to basically say, yeah, this is what, what's going on and uh, you can do it. Um, yeah, and get it, get it right. But yeah, it's... it's um, Software developers and hardware don't seem to mesh too well. And even our previous meetups where we started using Docmosis, um, we've had some trouble to try and just line up. It's, and also just random things like well, I was here with Mike last time. We we're trying to find a printer, find the right paper tray that we can put the label printer in, the labels paper in, sorry. And um, yeah, so it's just there's a lot of just a barrier of entry. It'd be like, you know, it'd be awesome if there was like a, a virtualized abstraction, like a, a docker for printers that, you know, you could go in and, uh, and talk about that. Um, but yes, it was painful. But basically, there's a few things too. There's like with general, when you're printing to real things, there's stuff called bleed where you deliberately, when you get a guillotine, and this is kind of almost like getting a guillotine and cutting through paper. Um, you, you, you have to leave some space because when you cut, it's not an exact thing. And so, like basically, I moved these from the bottom, like these were f right at the bottom at the edge of the, um, the, the cell. And it was just like, be smart about it and don't have things right at the edge and move things around so they're not 
on the corners. So that was kind of the, the, the smartest thing about the whole presentation, I think, to, to get that to, to line up properly. But it's just using some traditional things about print then, and learning those things and applying those. Um, yeah, question, Tim. Yeah. Could you parallelise that? Ooh. Uh, you. Is there any limits on the Well, we we hit it pretty hard yesterday, and they didn't block me, so it, it's not a ridiculous limit. Um, the thing is, you you it's paging basically. So if you know how many pages there are, you could probably parallelise the calls and just grab everything. Um, uh, and yeah, there's no reason we can't do that as well as vacation, which would probably speed up a little bit. Yeah. Yes, there is. So, when you look at the GitHub, uh, there's an application dot properties there that has two properties in it, which contains the secret keys to unlock both APIs. So if you're a, if you're a Meetup user, you can grab yours from, I think your there's a develop section in Meetup. And for Docmosis, you can go through your uh, yeah. like control panel. Login that. to that cloud thing. Yeah. Cool. Uh, is there a question for Ryan? Do you get PDF or PSA? Uh, oh, that I haven't checked to be honest. So it's a uh, well, it exports as a PDF. We didn't really specify which particular genre of PDF we wanted. Um, so I know what one you, I know what you're talking about, but I don't. I didn't even think to check. But. Some sort of PDF. Yeah, it is a PDF, it renders fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we'd get it out of the metadata here. Uh, don't, don't know, sorry. But uh, yeah, sorry. Find out. It's a good question for Paul. Sorry? Yeah, so. With oh. using their local library there, right? Behind the scenes, I believe it uses yeah. that Apache library, yeah. which is another good point, because that, that's a bit of a hassle that you have to have all those libraries on your servers. It's it's nice to be able to just call out to an API and get what you want from it. Do you know about like creating documents that would obviously just take a long time? In other words, just submitting the job and saying, oh, let me know when you're done and I'll pull back on the URL to get the results. Like rather than obviously not a synchronous thing yeah. to generate that PDF, but you're generating on the 10,000 pages. Yeah, we, we've, we've only obviously mm -hmm. done the synchronous call there, but. Is there an API? You know, I, 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 di I didn't or? see one on the API. But they've got some customers that generate, which would have some big workloads, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was something there. Yeah. They said something about last time when they were presenting, said something about emails, emailing the bank. Basically. When it's done. Yeah. 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 There's a whole bunch of, you, you, can, you can email. Yeah, well, that's yeah. one of the options, actually, yeah, exactly. in the API. There's a whole bunch of yeah. stuff about posting it to, you can post it to S3 and, and all that kind of thing, too. So, yeah.